for today's Witch Word of the Day, I am choosing Trophomancing Verb. <laughs> have, have you ever heard of Trophomancing? Of course I have. Like, I was just Trophomancing the other day. I went to the <laughs> store and I was like, I think I'll Trophomance through this aisle. <laughs> no, I've never heard of this thing. <laughs> this is a type of divination and it gives you the ability to gain insight into a, a question or situation, you know, kind of seeing the future, except you're using food as your medium. Oh, like truffle mancy. You're, you're mancing through the truffle. I Sure, if you want to use some <laughs> mushrooms, sure. Use those truffles from, from Kingdom Hearts and show them your magic, and then they'll give you a gift. Yay! <laughs> you haven't even read that? Wait, what are you doing with the book? So he has the confidence to finish the story. Hear now the words of the witches. This is Kevin, and welcome to Words of the Witches, the Charmed podcast that will guide you through the lesser-known published material in the Charmed universe and decide how it fits into the grand narrative of the TV series. I'm Kevin, your resident Charmed resource, and we're on episode 61 of Words of the Witches. And I'm Sean, and I just love comic books, especially the two, like, special edition Power Rangers ones I just got today, Kevin. I'm so excited. OMG. Happy New Year, Spell Wearers. Oh, my goodness. This is our first episode in the new year. I mean, besides the bonus one that just came up before this, it's uh, about the afterlife, and we talk about Prue a lot. Mm. Oh. And the planes of existence. So if you didn't listen to that bonus episode, you can do that. But this is our first episode comic episode of the year oh oh yes welcome to the 23s Ooh. oh <laughs> i'm a ghost <laughs> Bo. Bo. <laughs> we have a guest it's rob welcome back to the show you were here for the novel Spirit of the Wolf before. Yes, hello. Nice to see you guys again. Yes. <laughs> well, the first time I'm on the show with Sean. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm official co-host for the comics. Isn't that groovy? It is. <laughs> before we get started with the comic, I have some things some some things I want to do, right? Okay. Well, we got another review for the show. Oh. Which is exciting. I'm going to read that review. It's from Dylan with two L's, Brown. And it says, the best fan show. Charmed has been something meaningful to me beyond words since I was maybe 10 years old. Yes, I'm almost 30. Tears, <laughs> tears, tears, tears. <laughs> <laughs> I still vividly remember everything about the night of the series finale. That's how much I love the show. Listening to Kevin keep this story alive means so much to me, more than I can express. And I'm sure so many others. This podcast is certainly worth the listen. I love every minute. Thanks, Kevin, for giving us fans a space to continue the journey. XOXOXO. And then it says Dylan Brown on Twitter and Instagram. So you can follow them. <laughs> he, he's right, though. I agree. Thank you. Yeah, five stars across the board. <laughs> if yeah, if you nice. weren't here, the only thing I'd get is like re-watching the show over and over again. <laughs> you know, bringing it all together. Uh, and since you're here and Piper is your favorite, Rob, yes, I, I'm going to quiz you a little bit. Uh-oh. <laughs> I have one question. Because last issue, we saw Piper in the up there's with everybody. That was actually the fifth time Piper was in the up there's. Can you name the others? <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, well, there was the first one when Leo took her up there for like three months. Yeah, um, that's the first one. There was another one where actually all three of the sisters were up there doing uh, a spell to get rid of your favorite um, spell. Get rid of uh, somebody. Games. You got Rejection, it. Yeah. reflection. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's the second like one. That. Yeah, you got it. So that's the second uh, one. Let's see. Um, then there was uh, oh my goddesses. I think. Went up yeah. There for that. That's the fourth one. Um, so the, you're missing the third one. And it's it's oh. more vague because you don't actually see them up there; you just hear about it too. Um, I'm gonna have to say I don't right. remember. Sure, it's I got, actually I got in, most of them. You did, you did. I'm very impressed. <laughs> so the one you're missing is in um, Death Takes a Hollowell when they go up there as part of their their honeymoon 
celebration. They have like a little celebration and they say, you know, we're going to go up there. And Phoebe's like, okay, bring me back a cloud. And then she comes back with the light of eternal love, that lamp that she hates. Oh, right, 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 yeah. right. She goes up there. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Fun. <laughs> I just can't keep up with you. I know. It's hard. It's hard to be me. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I had a question for you. Sure. Mr. All Up in the Biz. Is this Warren's thing I heard about? Is that real? <laughs> I, I, I know things. I knew things before they even released the trailer. I was in the know about it. Um, I'm not allowed so to say So it's really happening. Well, it's, it is a fan-made sh- trailer. Oh, man. So it's, it's, not a, it's not a real Paramount Plus show, but it doesn't mean it can't be. Uh, and, uh, so it was, it was kind of like I think a you've pitch. said enough, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was kind of like a pitch for, for a real show. So it may or may not happen, but it didn't start off as a real show. Oh, okay. Damn it. Yeah. Calm but yeah, I, I know things. Excited. When when the time comes to reveal, um, we'll have a discussion about it on the podcast by the creators. So yes, sir. I've been, I've been in the talks. Yes, uh, <laughs> but good question. I had to be very. I have to be very hush hush about it. But you know, well, silence. <laughs> Here now, the words of the witches. Today we are covering season nine, issue thirteen, Piper's Place. So this is the start of a new arc or one off, if you will. It was written by Paul Ruditis, artwork by Reno Manneke, colors by Jason M. Brewery, letters by Jim Campbell, and edited by Paul Ruditis and Ralph Tedesco. Oh, and I want to, before we get started with that, I do want to read the back of Volume 3, since we are starting Volume 3. The years have passed quickly for the Charmed Ones since they learned of their magical heritage. In only one decade, they have experienced so much love and loss, joy and sorrow, failure and success. But time marches on and new challenges will be met. As Phoebe is haunted by her past, Pepper must deal with the present, and Paige is forced to cope with the future. But none of those events will prepare them to face the truth behind a family secret that could change everything for the war in line. Oh, oh no. This issue has two covers. We have our David Seidman picture that we talked about last one, where Piper is just carrying all the things. She has baby Melinda pointing her finger Sabrina style. Um, and she's just it's carrying very, a bunch of stuff. Um, it's very uh, Norman Rockwell. That's mm-hmm. what I said. That's what you said. Yeah. <laughs> um, Great minds. Cover two is the third of our little triptychs that you're talking about with Piper. <laughs> so we have a season one promo picture and a season six promo picture in swirly auburn green maroonyness. Yeah. All right. So it starts off with this building that Piper just bought for her new restaurant. And she says, the princess traveled through time and space to rescue her prince from from his icy prison. I love this because it's kind of a parallel to Leo being iced in season eight. Oh, (laughs) that's Mm -hmm. true. Yeah, so she's kind of telling her story to her children, you know, their love story. How sweet. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Yeah. (laughs) But she's doing it through the phone. She's not really there. So she's on the phone reading her children a bedtime story um, while she's like managing this opening up the restaurant craziness. And Leo's on the other side. She's like, is everybody asleep? He's like, well, two of them are. Wyatt's being a grump. And <laughs> Leo tells Wyatt, he's like, say goodnight, Wyatt. And he's like, Rrr. he looks very much like Donald Trump in this picture. I don't know why. Ew, he does. <laughs> Ew, that Donald Trump face. <laughs> Those little Donald Trump hands. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Funny. Um, but yeah, so Piper is just like, I'll be home in a little bit. Good night. <laughs> Don't wait up for me. Wyatt looks like a little brat. He does. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now Piper is coming home late. She's walking into the manor. Oh, she's leaving herself a voicemail. <laughs> mm-hmm. Voice memo. And she says, five, the lobster risotto recipe isn't working. 86 it. You've got enough specials. Six, walk the walk-in door. And finally, ten, double-check the spelling of the putinesca on the menus. I'm never going to get this done on my own. And Leah, I'm sorry, uh, Wyatt is laying over there, kind of listening to her, faking being asleep. 
and he, he hears her say that she can't do it alone. And she also says, oh, and threaten to blow up the sign painter if he misses another appointment. Then she comes in to her room and she finds Leo laying there in bed asleep. And she says, hello, gorgeous bed. And she plops down next to him in the bed and passes out. This is only the second time in her story that I've heard of Putinesca. It was in a series of unfortunate events. So oh. have you guys heard this a lot? <laughs> no. I watch a lot of Gordon Ramsay and yes, I've heard <laughs> quite a few times. Touche. <laughs> so we see Wyatt sneak out of bed and he's like, fuck you, mom. <laughs> and he goes to the Book of Shadows. Uh oh, this can't be good. And he magically uses shiny hands to turn the pages to multiplicity. A spell. Is, is, this, is this a time? Is this it? The, well, we, this, we have, this, is, this is a time for multiple things. So <laughs> we have You Look Familiars and Rhyme Time on these two things. So first, You Look Familiar. It's funny, she's so familiar to me, though. Reminds me of this old stray that used to hang outside my loft. Familiars, that's what I'm looking for. Have we met before? You look familiar. So this, pay, this panel of Wyatt doing his glowy hands over the book like father, like son, very much the same mm -hmm. way that Leo turned the pages over the book in Morality Bites. And also in like the first season when he goes up there and is like, <laughs> almost gets caught. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's been doing it quite a bit. So there you go. And then we have the Charm of Multiplicity spell, which is another You Look Familiar moment that we saw in Which Proves It Anyway, season one, episode 16. Oh, yeah. Huh? So that was the spell she did. Mm -hmm. This is the one she did to triplicate herself. Rob, would you like to read the spell? Should we try a spell? Why not? Let's try a spell. In the wind, I send this rhyme. Bring death before me, before my time. You've really got to lay off the rhyming group. Wonderful. Witty, but wordy. I did the rhyme. I will do the time. Good night. Oh, yes, please. To multiply your strength, recite these words at length. Take my powers, blessed be, multiply their strength by three. Oh. Now, here's the thing. Here's the worst crime of this whole comic. This is why Wyatt <laughs> is a little shit. He's a little brat. He multiplied Piper when she's wearing that top. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> the ugliest greenish, brownish, pukey color you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> is she going to the uh the renaissance fair only she had nothing else to wear because <laughs> we see piper like multiply out of bed so it looks like there's either two like one following the other or like one gets up and walks out all right so now we're back the next morning with leo in the bathroom oh my gosh hold on <laughs> I had to get this out. This is this is a you look familiar moment too. This panel, this upper panel. It's funny, she's so familiar to me though. Reminds me of this old stray that used to hang outside my loft. Familiars, that's what I'm looking for. Have we met before? You look familiar. Oh. That shower curtain is from the show. It, we've seen it in Chick Flick. We've seen it in Ex Libris, the one after that where, where Prue goes nice orbs. Um. This, John's laughing. <laughs> I'm just laughing because now we're doing You Look Familiar to a shower curtain. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is it's, it's iconic. This is an iconic yeah. shower curtain. Um, so I'm like, I know that shower curtain. You know, this is the part. This is the same shower curtain where Piper's like, you know, I'm being stuck by psycho killers and I hide in the shower. This is that shower curtain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think this man needs like a, a board or... Guinness Book of Charm Knowledge or something. Yeah. I just got you a know. notification that a Shower Curtain is signing at the next uh, Comic-Con. Are you going to travel to see Shower Curtain? I would. For this one, it's, I mean, it's, it's just crazy that I know the show so well that these things just pick up, go out to me. Um, but then it got me down a rabbit hole, too. I need, I need to go on this rant a little bit. The bathroom has changed many a time. You know, they've they have seen other showers where it's like, a, a closed where you can open the door and it's like a, you know Prue was in that in well, from Prue to Eternity and Pepper and Leo were in that in Pre Witch where it's like boxed in and there's not there's no shower curtain 
Mm-hmm. So I'm like, mm-hmm. which shower do they have? And then we see Phoebe in other episodes in like a bear claw tub. So they can't have all three of these in the same bathroom. I think they have multiple bathrooms, don't they? No, there's only one bathroom upstairs. They had two bathrooms. They had one downstairs that before, before they converted it to a Five. closet. Yes, but there's only <laughs> there's only one bathroom upstairs. I'm a dang. <laughs> it's a it's one of those magic bathrooms. Maybe yeah, they're witches. They just change it for their own needs. <laughs> so I there was like, some uh, Renos that happened with the curtain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, thank you for this going down this tangent with me. But it was just something I had to point out. <laughs> if there's ever a, another Charmed uh, reboot, you need to be a, like an executive producer. Yeah, I need to be like a resource. Yeah, because <laughs> they that's. Can't be changing bathrooms just like willy nilly now. <laughs> you know, just imagine see? Kevin on set. Continuity air there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, continuing the story. So <laughs> Leo's talking to a piper in the shower, uh, and she's like, "Oh, thanks for keeping things on track, Leo. The boys are doing great. You're awesome." And then he comes down the stairs with Melinda, and he sees Piper downstairs cleaning up Wyatt's toys. He's like, wow, you move fast. <laughs> and then uh, he puts Melinda down in the little playpen. And then he goes into the kitchen. And then he sees Piper early there in the kitchen with the boys. He's like, how'd you get in here now? <laughs> are you some kind of speed spell? Are you on speed? What's happening? Uh, <laughs> and then Piper's like, I've got a Denver omelet warming for you on the stove. My way of thanking you for all you've done. Well, I get this restaurant ready. And he says, and I appreciate it, but do you really have time for all this today? And meanwhile, there are two Pipers in the other room talking to each other. And she says to the other Piper, the living room is clean. And once you're done, get here. I'll get, and once you're done here, I'll get the dishes. And then we see Piper, I'm sorry, Leo back out talking to the boys. And he says, do either of you have something to tell me? And all three Pipers are now together in the other room. And they and I'm going to guess it's real Piper. She says, no time for breakfast. I'll grab something. Oh, crap. And the other two Pipers are still in their, their uh, pukey <laughs> green outfits. <laughs> and we see the real Piper look at the other two. And she says, I don't have time for this either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what was happening. She got startled by the other two. So I don't think she realized what was right, going on. She had no idea. She's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we continue in the kitchen. Leo's like, Piper, what did you do? As he gestures towards the ugly Piper. <laughs> and he, she, Piper's like, don't look at me. I'm not the only magic user in this house. So then they're like, boys, do you have something you want to tell mommy? And this is the best line of the whole comic <laughs> because little Chris goes, no, mommy, mommies. <laughs> Very fun. <laughs> Very fun. And then they go, why? Or Piper goes, why it? And he goes, I didn't do it. And he's not even looking at her. This is like the true sign. Like, yeah, I did it, bitch. I did it. I'm not even going to look at you when I lie to you. <laughs> and Piper knows her son because she's like, why it? What have we told you about lying and casting spells? And as he's eating, he's like, you told me not to. <laughs> and then Leo comes and says, did you do either of those things? He goes, no. And then this is such a Piper line. We never should have taught him to read why mommy doesn't have the time for this. <laughs> and then she looks at her clone. She goes, or maybe I do. Right. <laughs> it's just a tip for all your listeners out there. Do not teach your children to read or write. It only <laughs> I know. Heartache. <laughs> right. <laughs> Next, we see the real Piper with Phoebe at a cafe called Bo's. Bo's Coffee. And there's like, uh, yeah, he's like, I know I needed a break. Can you believe I'm finally opening the restaurant I always dreamed of? Oh, my goodness. And Phoebe's like, no, I'm talking about Wyatt using magic. Like, we need to talk about that. That's personal gain. Like this could be have some really serious repercussions. You know, <laughs> this could get bad. And then she's like, "Well, fake Piper number one, 
is working on him and fake pepper number two is at the restaurant so you know we'll be ready it's fine <laughs> i got it all covered <laughs> i'm just like i'm gonna relax now and drink my coffee phoebe is going on you know this is going back to the angels of destiny it's like they eradicated all of the prophecy and they gave us you know the chance to be free and it's like now we're gonna let the kids run wild i don't know about that phoebe is just really worried about what this could what cost this could have for them and piper is just like i'm more concerned about <laughs> that extra large coffee on my kidneys I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> and so she leaves to go to the bathroom. Wow, she's really like whatever about it. So now she's on her way to the bathroom. She goes in, she comes out, and... Well, it's actually a clone that comes out. Oh, well, I think we're having a backfire. <laughs> she comes out of the bathroom and goes back to Phoebe, and Phoebe's like, that was fast. And Piper says, it's such a nice day, I'd figure I'd walk you to work. Oh, so she's like gonna... Not just a uh, power, strength, power, spell. She's also like being like whatever about it. Like her concerns are being spread out through all the clones. <laughs> and then she's looking for her keys. Well, actually, another uh, one of the other clones. I think that's the real Piper. Yeah. You can see the other two girls walking away, and one of them is Piper, too. So I guess Phoebe's leaving with the clone. And Phoebe's like, but that's the opposite direction you're. You sure you don't want to go get to the restaurant? And uh, I guess Clone Piper says, it's Handel. I'd like to spend some time with my sister. Meanwhile, the real Piper walks in the other direction. And Phoebe and Clone Piper walk in the other direction. This is so messy, Miss Piper. Like, there's people still sitting there. They could see both of you right there. Right. <laughs> and look at that boat's coffee sign. There's only one F in that coffee sign. <laughs> <gasps> oh, there it is. <laughs> <Mm-mm-mm>. <laughs> so now we are at the burgeoning, I'm going to say burgeoning restaurant because it's yeah. still being prepared, prepare, say. And Piper thinks just get in and send the doppelganger home without anyone noticing. No problem. She sees the um, doppelganger Piper in the office on her laptop. Um, just disgusting. She's still wearing the same clothes from the day before. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> She's doing the and walk of shame hears... to work. Yeah. <laughs> she hears a crash with a K, not a C. And she's like, what was that? And she goes and sees that the cook um, had dropped something. And another doppelganger piper is like, idiot, I warned you to be careful with the saucepans. And she's like, not good i'm like he looks so scared too that guy i would too piper's terrifying in that outfit right (laughs) (laughs) and then the real piper goes into the office and says call the kitchen disguise your voice and tell the other piper to meet us outside now (laughs) and then so piper comes out and she sees two more pipers and she's like i thought i told one of you to stay with the kids and that Piper's like, no, you must have me confused with somebody else. <laughs> uh, and he's like, she's like, good thing, too, because your schedule's a mess. I was here to save the day, so thank me. And then she's like, what do you mean you've been here since dawn? Because she tells her she's been done doing stuff. She's like, what do you mean? No, you were in the kitchen this morning. She's like, no, that was the other one. <laughs> and then she's like, wait, how many are there? Because right now, there has to be way more than three. So then Paige comes by. She's like, I've been at the flower market with this one, another clone. <laughs> um, and she looks like super happy, creepy, smiley. Um and then Piper's like, Ugh, I hate it when Phoebe's right. This is backfiring. Grr. So that Piper calls Phoebe, who's with another clone, the one that walked off with her. I think I'm with got the smothering Piper that's like watching me every doing everything and <laughs> judging her. On the next page, this one's a little risque. <laughs> I call her First... Porny Piper. <laughs> <laughs> Porny Piper is up in their room trying to seduce Leo. And there's a... Uh... <laughs> Something that says, I'd be more worried about what they're up to. Oh, I guess that's the other Pipers and Phoebe talking about the other ones at home. Yeah. And so Leo's on the bed and he says, when you told me there was an emergency at home, this wasn't what I had in mind. And Corny Piper says, but it is an emergency, Leo. We haven't had any alone time in weeks. (laughs) Meanwhile, Mm -hmm. Looks like original Piper's back in the kitchen at the manor. And she says, needs more pepper or possibly mugwort. That's actually another clone. All these are clones. 
Oh, they're clones because she was wearing that the next day. Yeah. So some clones have this one outfit. Some clones have the other oh, outfit. Oh, so she's just cloning all over the place. Yeah. Damn. And that particular panel is a You Look Familiar moment. It's funny. She's so familiar to me, though. Reminds me of this old stray that used to hang outside my loft. Familiars. That's what I'm looking for. Have we met before? You look familiar. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> If you think think about Forever Charmed and the forward in time, like stories they had when they're writing the Book of Shadows, do you remember when Piper is in the kitchen and she tests the cooking she's eating? This is drawn exactly from that directly. Oh from yeah, that. Mm-hmm. even down to the microwave and the books and the bottles on the counter. That's all in the frame that they copied. So they turned. Like yeah, that other pot there that looks like it has some kind of pasta in it. That was a salad in the original show but mm, yeah is the salad the look for the you look familiar moment <laughs> <laughs> i heard salad is shiny or it's signing to you <laughs> you know not in front of my salad not in front of my salad <laughs> meanwhile another clone piper is at the grocery store with melinda and she says only organic from now on melinda no more preservatives in my house Meanwhile, one of the clone pipers is now uh, vanquishing a demon. I'm sorry, we say vanquish, right? Yeah. Ah. She's <laughs> vanquishing a demon. Zoom. Zoom. All right, that's supposed to be like... <sighs> it's very confusing because Zoom was the thing we had for freezing time, but she's exploding the demon, so it doesn't compute. Yeah. Continuity! <laughs> yeah, no! <laughs> and then yet another clone is back at the manor playing with Chris. And she's like, vroom, vroom, mommy's going to win. These are playing little cars. <laughs> and then little Wyatt is being surrounded by three mommies now. And one of them says, Wyatt is going to stay in this chair until he admits the truth. No food, no games, nothing. Other Piper says, don't you think that's a little harsh? He's just a child. He doesn't understand what he did wrong. Third Piper says, Wyatt knows enough about magic to understand his mistake. We need to focus on how to fix it. So I feel like what we're hinting at is each Piper has like a part of Piper's personality. It seems like some of mm-hmm. them are stricter, meaner, nicer. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's what happened the... with Prue, too. Mm-hmm. It's supposed mm-hmm. to happen that way. Yeah, that's how we'll <laughs> it's supposed to be split in different personalities and stuff. So. Yeah. So we have a Piper original or Piper Prime uh, on the phone. <laughs> She's like, round up all the Pipers and get them back to the manor. We need to. Oh, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> this is that moment for real. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, Piper. And then one of the clone pipers comes to catch and goes, I got her, um, me. <laughs> and she's like, I'm okay, just a little dizzy, probably has something to do with her. And then there's like another piper clone. And she's like, what? Do I have something in my teeth? <laughs> and yeah, there's like five pipers in this picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the next pa- page has page. So she's like, Piper, what's going on? <laughs> And she's like, we think Wyatt cast a spell, and now I'm like multiplying. It's fine. We should just we should go home. And then one of the other Piper clones says, "But one of us should stay here and wait for that sign painter, so we have a nice sign for our restaurant." Yay! And then <laughs> another Piper is like, "I have a recipe for a killer amaretto bread pudding, so I have to start working on that. I'm, I'm you know get that going." This is the Piper that made fun of the other chef guy for dropping things. She's like, he's such a moron. And then she's the other Piper's like, don't make fun of my staff. How dare you? But tell me about this bread pudding. Cause it sounds delicious. And then, like, <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm like, I do want to try that. It sounds really good. It does. <laughs> and then she, Piper just holds her head and she's like, I'm sorry. I'm having really a hard time focusing, which going to make this a you live familiar moment. It's funny. She's so familiar to me though. Reminds me of this old stray that used to hang outside my loft. Familiars. That's what I'm looking for. Have we met before? You look familiar. In. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> the crazy house, right? Asylum. When she was in the asylum in her dream. You're right. When she does this brain drain, brain drain. Yeah. So, but it does. It's very much like that. her in the wheelchair going like, you know, mm-hmm. So, yeah. good catch on that. I'm glad you got that one. Oh. 
Get my charm uh, juices flowing. Yeah. This issue is full of you look familiars. <laughs> so Paige is like, give me your car keys. And then she's like, okay, Pipers, into the car. So she, she just <laughs> loads them all up. So then Porny Piper is still back at home with Leo. And Leo says on the phone, and he's like, I suspected something was wrong. Hurry home. <laughs> and Porny Piper says, don't rush on our account. And Leo's like, Piper, you've got to stop. Porny Piper's like, why? We've got at least 15 minutes before they get here. <laughs> and Leo's like, you're not my wife. You're not Piper. This is very What Lies Beneath. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> and then she goes... And she hugs him, and she's like, yes, I am. I'm an exact duplicate in every way. Her memories are mine. Mine will be hers when I get back, probably. <laughs> and she and Leo storms out, and he's like, I've got to check on the kids. Can you imagine once like they get all back together, and then Piper's like, oh, I had an <laughs> orgasm funny. today. <laughs> <laughs> Can we all agree that uh, we figure the top where panel hand is? Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was thinking she's like she's totally like on his crotch. She's grabbing mm-hmm. it. And actually, X Men moment. This is very multiple man because when he reabsorbs his clones, he does get their memories. So she's mm-hmm. onto something here. So yeah. does Naruto. Oh yeah. So there you go. <sighs> but she is wearing that really like sexy little thing with her boobs all out and that little pink bow right by her cleavage. Ooh. Yeah. She wants to be unwrapped. I know. That's some suburban laundry right there. <laughs> it is. So on the next page, we see three of the Pipers kind of in an argument. And the one Piper says, I, Piper, will not let you spank this child. <laughs> and another Piper says, he needs to learn his lesson. It's for his own protection. And the third Piper says, can we focus on the problem and worry about the punishment later? Like, we're just making <laughs> Pipers like rabbits. We need to get this under control. <laughs> so one of the Pipers says, it's clearly the charm of multiplicity. And we see here, he'll tell us for sure if we do things my way. So she's still going for that spanking. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Uh, we have one of the Pipers say, I think I'm forgetting what I'm supposed to think. So we're getting this hint, like they're getting spread too thin, like Rob said earlier. So they're starting to lose their their individuality, it seems. Mm-hmm. And then Leo says, all right, everybody, out of Wyatt's room. I'm taking care of this. And he says, oh, Wyatt, wait till your mother gets home. But she's already home. And her, and she, and she, and her, <laughs> and you. <laughs> Look on the wall. There's an Adventure Time character. I was oh just God, about to say like, <laughs> the human. Yeah. Wait. He likes Adventure Time. Like that's so weird that he's on there. <laughs> yeah. I guess the artist is a fan. All right. The next yeah. page is carpool of the Pipers. There's six Pipers in this car with Paige, and they're just talking away, just complaining, just yelling. Paige looks a little sad behind the wheel and <laughs> Piper's just like I don't feel so good the real Piper <laughs> and then Paige is like we're almost at the manor just don't throw up <laughs> and you guys hear blah yourself together <laughs> yep <laughs> and there's blah 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 talk 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 chatter chatter and the real Piper's like can it like and like, there's only room in my head for one of me everyone else piped down <laughs> and Paige is like, I guess we know which one is the true Piper. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> that bitch you are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the next page, we got all the Pipers down at the manor. And we got uh, Paige, Piper, and Phoebe standing up on the stairs with all of the Pipers flooding the, the living room. And then she, Piper says, everyone, stay here and don't do anything. We're going to take care of it. And she starts walking upstairs and she starts glowing and she's like, oh, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that's uh, the birth of a new clone. And she walks upstairs with Phoebe and another clone is standing on the landing of the stairs. And she says, I've got you. Come on. We've got to get to Wyatt. And so 
Paige is leading Piper and Phoebe past Porny Piper in the bedroom. And <laughs> Paige is like, the Pipers are coming. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> we almost ran out of the room in the SUV. We almost ran out of room in the SUV. As they're passing Porny Piper, the real Piper's like, what the? Someone get her back in her right clothes. And she's like, I don't need that outfit disappearing along with her. <laughs> she wants that mama lingerie. Right, yeah. <laughs> and Faith pushes her in the room and she's like, on it. She's going to derobe Piper. Yeah, that's like somebody's fantasy like Paige ripping the lingerie off of piper two sisters going at it <laughs> yeah. it's mine oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very cinderella except there's no dress left at the end yeah. <laughs> you ripped my straps <laughs> i won't give it to you unless you fuck me <laughs> <laughs> oh no you're welcome. <laughs> it's okay. We're only half sisters. <laughs> <laughs> only fuck the half sisters. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, continuing. Anyway, <laughs> so we have um, Leo, Piper, and Phoebe are in the room with Wyatt, and uh, Piper says, "There's my little spellcaster," and Phoebe's like, "I'll get the book of shadows." And Piper says, Wyatt, is there something you're ready to tell mommy? And he says, I'm sorry. I did a spell. And she <laughs> says, and? And he says, I'm sorry I lied. And she's like, it's okay. I'm sorry I haven't been around. Mommy's got a restaurant. She also has to satisfy daddy, who's like super <laughs> horny. And <laughs> I'm going to try to make um, time for you, even though I'm super busy right now. Would do you understand that? He says, yes. And she says, I love you, sweetie. And they hug. That's really nice. I, I it get all, is. I'm a little choked up here. It's beautiful. <laughs> Just modern parenting. <laughs> and then the next page has Phoebe coming into the room. She's like, Wyatt knows the word multiply? Smart kid. She's like, maybe a little too smart. And then Piper is like, Wyatt, can you learn how to read backwards? As like, that's supposed to reverse the spell? Mm. Like what kind of backwards? Uh, like reasonable ruler? Yeah, or like the words backwards <laughs> or something. I'm like, okay, well, I'm triggered because this is not how the spell works. When Prue cast it, she was told that the clones stay around as long as they're needed, as long as the reason why they've been summoned, the reason why they were conjured to begin with. Once that passes, then they disappear automatically. Mm. That's what's supposed yeah, to happen. Yeah. They should include uh, from now until it's now again in every spell. Yeah. And that's trying to pull on a Braxis when he read the book backwards. To, but that, uh, I mean, it, maybe it could have worked, but I'm like, that's not what we were told before. But then Wyatt puts his hand on the page again and his glowy hands glow. And he goes, um, Wyatt? And then Paige comes in and she's like, all the papers are gone. <laughs> <laughs> and... And then like, okay. And then Piper's like, I guess there still is a little twice blessed in him, huh? Ah! And then I go like this. And then I get mad again too, because like, you tell us one thing and you immediately tell us to go against it, the issue after. You say, oh, their stuff's absolved. They're no longer twice blessed. And then they say, oh, maybe it's a little. It's just like the Leo thing already. I'm still a little white letter. Uh, they can't commit. Well, this one, it looks like that's what they were going to try to make it work. You know, like, well, do this and see if that helps. But it seems like his white lighter powers just kind of like told the book, hey, we figured this clone thing out. They can go now. <laughs> so this is my theory. He's using his projection here mm. to make them disappear. Yeah. So I I do believe he probably said the spell. You know, he he said them out loud, but it, it amplified his or, you know, because because it's supposed to multiply her only by three. But because he's already so powerful and his power of projection, that was what he was thinking, it like triplicated his multiplication. So it was like bringing like nine pipers and come in over and over. So it just made it go out of whack. So it's actually doing his, his projection power that he was strengthening, not the multiplication. How many times did they say that the, the spells will backfire on you? There's like, they come back for you, they come back times tenfold. three. Yeah. Times three. So, but if, <laughs> well, maybe but that's if you're. Where he's at. 
Yeah, and if you're already multiplying the spell to begin with, then it comes back to you even harder. So it's like, it's just like a big math equation that I don't have time for. But, <laughs> but yeah, this is his protection power. power. Yeah. <laughs> Because with chaos magic, it doesn't matter what magic you're doing; it's what you believe. So if he mm-hmm. believes he's doing the spell, then that would still right. cause it to happen. So let's get into our power play since we're on the <laughs> subject. Power play. Today's power play is projection. And projection is a power that allows its possessor to manipulate reality. Uh, The trigger to this power is through strong emotions and vivid imagination. Though witches of the highest level have been shown to be able to use it almost without any effort at all. Their wishes, be it verbal, mental, purposeful, or subconscious, could be brought to life. This essentially gives the user a bevy of all kinds of powers, including reality warping. Mm. For a reality warper, nearly all things are possible and almost anything they want can be done. Uh, This ability may be used and manifested in many different ways from changing physical aspects, the user's surroundings, augmenting powers, to distorting the very fabric of space (laughs) and flow of time itself. Yeah, so Wyatt is pretty much the most powerful thing ever. (laughs) (laughs) And they don't even think about it because I would have bound his powers a long time ago just because he's dangerous. (laughs) Yeah, I think the dragon was proof of that. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm just thinking that this was all some kind of manifestation of his projection. Mm-hmm. He wasn't just reading the spell. He was like, this is what mm-hmm. I want. Yeah. Make it happen. Yeah. Uh, Leo's like, oh, he's just he's just very gifted because he's a son of a naturally gifted witch. Oh, super talented. Uh, and this oh. is another... <laughs> Yeah, this is another you look familiar moment. It's funny, she's so familiar to me, though. Reminds me of this old stray that used to hang outside my loft. Familiars, that's what I'm looking for. Have we met before? You look familiar. Where we see, right behind White, is Welvy the teddy bear. Oh. So I love that they included that. Mm-hmm. So I'll put, a, I'll put a side by side of that where Welvy is behind Wyatt in Imaginary Fiends. <laughs> is Welvy signing this, this year, too? No, he, uh, he's busy with Mattel. He's busy. <laughs> he's got a new line coming out at Build-A-Bear. He's busy. <laughs> yeah. So now we're back at the restaurant. It looks like it's opening day. And we see Wyatt sitting there with, I think that's one of the cooks. And then Paige and Phoebe are sitting over there talking. And Paige is like, oh, that is the cutest thing ever. Oh, I see. Wyatt is passing out hors d'oeuvres. And his little tux. Uh huh. And Phoebe says, after all the trouble he caused today, Wyatt insisted on helping tonight. And then we have a picture of Paige, Phoebe, and Piper standing together. And Piper says, too bad he spelled more appetizers or spilled more appetizers than he served, but the pa- patrons are eating it up. <laughs> and, then, and then you see a wide shot of the whole restaurant. It's crowded. And everybody's getting served. And then Paige says, literally and figuratively. <laughs> I don't. And then Piper says, I don't want to get too excited since it's only the first night. But turnout is way better than I expected. And then we, on the next page, uh, Piper's with Wyatt. And she's like, come on, Wyatt. You've worked off your punishment. That's enough, <laughs> you know, underage servitude for tonight. You don't want the cops to arrest mommy. So she's like, let's go see daddy in the courtyard. And then uh, we see Piper saying, much as I loved P3, I can't remember any night in my career that's been more exciting. And Phoebe says, yeah, I'm going to miss P3. And Piper says, me too. Owning the club really gave me the confidence to finish the story. (laughs) The confidence (laughs) to open this place. But it's time to move on to bigger and better things. And we see outside, (laughs) we see our beautiful, lovely men, Coop, Henry, and Leo standing with their champagne. Oh, and Leo's got two. He's double fisting. I would too if I was married to Piper. And they're waiting for their wife. He's probably got one for Piper to give her. But why why didn't... It's weird that he has one for Piper, but they don't have one for the others. 
I oh, but that's good. Oh, oh, because they already have one. Page and Phoebe already Page have one. Doesn't drink. <laughs> yeah, so Page's has must have to be non-alcoholic. Maybe they have two options. Yeah, it's just cider. And Phoebe, being a good sister, got cider with Paige to support her. Hopefully that's what it is, and they're not destroying the continuity. Paige is a slightly different color, so it's cider. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll buy it. But anyway, so there, Piper's thanking them. Thanks for being here for me, not the Piper crazies. And then Leo's like, a toast to my beautiful wife, to Piper. And then they're all like, to Piper. And Wyatt's like, to mommy. And then we see... <laughs> The final panel is the outside of the restaurant, and we learn that it is called Hallowells, and they have the beautiful new sign out front. Yay, it looks so nice. Yeah. So overall thoughts about this issue? I um, thought it was very filler. (laughs) That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. (laughs) Filler episode. (laughs) Yeah. But it was fun. I don't know how I feel about them using like almost an exact same plot element over again. It's kind of like, eh, we've seen this. Yeah, I mean, this is very similar to what happened in Witch Prison anyway. And also, a novel we covered called A Tale of Two Pipers, <laughs> where there was two clones. Um, and that novel wasn't as effective as Witch Prison in any way. This issue is even less effective than the novel. It just felt like madness to me more than anything and just confusion and like I didn't get what I should have been getting from the issue. There wasn't even any bad guys. No, no. Which, you know, I don't need necessarily, but uh, well, I mean, it's at just... At least a, a, a little something. blurb of somebody yeah. doing something in the background. I mean, the One of the clones exploded as a demon in one part for some yeah. reason. There was that. Yeah. Demon. I, I'm, yeah. I, w- I was guessing that one of Piper's personalities was like Huntress Piper from from the oh, yeah, from reality. Centennial Charmed, yeah. Where she just goes out and hunts demons. Yeah. That was my possibly. theory on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but like there's way too many clones. And you're right, when you're split, each clone should represent one aspect of your personality, which you see in which present any anyway. But because there's so many in here, they all kind of blended together to me. Like there is not there's no clear distinction for most of the time, you know. So uh, this might have you know, played better on an actual TV show. <laughs> maybe. Uh, and I, I do appreciate it. there are lots of callbacks to this series. We had so many you look familiars in here. So I did like those. And I did like the little moment with Wyatt. Was, I thought that was very sweet. But in the end, this is an issue that bears no significance to anything. It has no bearing. It's very one-off um, and just not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I can I come back on a more exciting episode? <laughs> <laughs> you know, perhaps we have lots more to go. <laughs> Anything for canonical? Canonical. Canonical. Um, no, not that I could say. I think there was a lot of a lot of uh, actual going throwbacks to a lot of regular things. They didn't. I have mess stuff. It up. <laughs> I have stuff. Oh, of course you do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all. This cover, where Piper's holding the stuff, that picture frame that the wedding photo is in is not the correct picture frame. <laughs> this is a they have it in like this black generic black frame. It's supposed to be a silver rectangle frame with little That's beads true. on it. <laughs> well, that picture frame was on tour. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's one I did think about. I mentioned before about the spell about how he, the clone should go as long. And then if if Paige is in fact not drinking cider, that is a continuity error. If they're giving her champagne, I'd be mad at that too. So those are the things. Yeah, I do uh, actually like kind of hate the cover now because it's misleading. Because Melinda's the one casting the spell, right? Not Wyatt, right? It's Evil, like false advertising. All yeah. Melinda does in this is sleep. and get carried around um okay tips for future white letters what's the moral of this issue oh really just messengers guides think of us as guardian angels for good witches tips for future future white 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 letters I was out being a force of good in the universe. Don't cast spells for personal gain. 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. I would say it's a simple one. Like, at the heart of this, it's work-life balance. She was neglecting her kids to get her restaurant set up. She needed a balance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my tip is inundating yourself with too many tasks can inevitably turn counterproductive. Uh, yeah. You know, because physical and mental health focus and your quality of work may suffer when you're like stretched too thin. So yeah, just be mindful of that. Yeah. The more uh, you know. Next is ooh onomatopoeia, and this is another issue that had like none. We had crash and zoom, I think. So uh, neither one really excites me, but I guess I'll pick crash because it's different. Because <laughs> it's with a K <laughs> and it's correct. Crash with a K. Like zoom. <laughs> yeah. Zoom. Yeah, mine's crash. <laughs> yeah, I still I choose Zoom. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next is most valuable panel. What's your favorite one? Probably the one where why it was all glowy and making the books. I mean, it's pretty. Day. It was really pretty. Yeah, I do like that one. That's mine too. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to put the one where Piper apologizes to Wyatt just because I'm a sentimental person and I cry. Aww. <laughs> uh, next is sexiest drawing. Ooh. Oh, that's definitely Porny Piper. <laughs> which which panel? The Juice Leo. Um, actually, <laughs> the one where they're walking by. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Porny Piper standing in the doorway. And she's like playing with her little on, rear pulling bow. Pulling her bow. She's like... Mm. <laughs> It's like, well, this is what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> like, nobody knows how to please a piper like a piper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I like anyone where Piper's wearing this beautiful barf green shirt. Like, it's just so hot. <laughs> no, there's something really weird to me, because I don't know why I find this sexy, but the one where Leo's, like, buttoning up his shirt for the day, and, oh. like, just imagining, like, being there when Leo's, like, getting dressed or undressed yeah. it's a very sexy idea <laughs> with the iconic shower curtain <laughs> yes yes yeah. i really just want to fuck the shower curtain you got me <laughs> 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 uh i was torn up between either pony piper grabbing leo's crotch or pony piper telling leo that they have 15 minutes left and she's like lana richie in it on the bed um <laughs> Um, so one of those two, probably, I don't know. I like them both. I'll just be greedy. Okay. <laughs> uh, issue ranking. What is your ranking of this? We have it Magically Delicious, Pretty Witchin, A Sorcerer's Apprentice, Disenchanting, or Vanquishable? Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to say Vanquishable. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Wow. Okay. Simply because if you take this one out, you'll never matter. know it was gone. I mean, right. I mean, the the most consequential thing in it is that her restaurant is now open and has a name. Yeah. Yeah, we could have established that in one square, Anytime. like an establishing yeah. block. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. true. <laughs> um, I didn't hate it. I don't think it's unquenchable, but I'm giving it a disenchanting just because the whole mess with like they kept hinting at the different pipers, but if you're going to write a story about it, like go all the way, make it less confusing. Maybe don't do as many pipers. Just give us a few like really yeah. good personality pipers. You could have just had the three, like the original concept was. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. Mine is disenchanting as well, because I mean, it was not a bad story. It was just really executed really poorly and really bland. Uh, the next is P is for pole. Prue. Piper. You mean it's, it's just you and Prue, huh? And a big hello to you too, Penny. Come on, Patty. The rest is up to them. Paige. My name is Paige. Hmm. Another P, imagine that. P is for poll. So oh. our poll question for next week is, we do know that Piper's restaurant is now called Hallowell's, which I kind of like that name. I think it makes sense. It sounds very classy. It maybe might leave Paige out a little bit, even though she's a glorified Hallowell. But uh, but my question is, what's another name you'd consider for Piper's restaurant? Goodness. Uh, what about the Boiling Cauldron? Oh, that sounds familiar. <laughs> I like it. 
I th- I put Kitchen like, Witch <laughs> or the Kitchen Witch. I thought it'd be kind of cute. How about the Manor? The Manor. Like, let's go back to the Manor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean that. Yeah, that's pretty generic enough that it can be really universal. <laughs> I like that. So, okay. but yeah, it's hard. So, like, Hallowell just seems like a good name. So I was like, I don't know what else I could choose really. But so, Sean, tell us what's next. Ooh, what's next? Okay, so we have this picture of someone tearing apart a picture of Phoebe and Coop. And it's issue 14, Cupid's Harrow. Coop is one of the toughest assignments a Cupid can accept. And this, oh, Coop is on one of the toughest assignments a Cupid can accept. And this time it comes with unexpected consequences. When Phoebe sees her husband plogged with questions about the family he never met, she tries to help by researching his past, unaware that a mysterious force works against her. As she tries to orchestrate a reunion centuries in the making, she could wind up tearing a family apart. Yeah, and this someone you're referring to is Cole. Oh, that's Cole? Oh, I see it now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why is, is Cole it? doing this? Oh, 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 I thought we got rid of Cole. We've all been bad, and we're just getting more Cole for Christmas. <laughs> so that's the end, then. We reached it. Uh, <laughs> Rob, where can people follow you and see your things? Oh, you can come and see my beautiful booty up there on the Instagram at Mr. Mr. underscore Robert on the Instagrams. Huh. <laughs> and you can listen to my music, too. Pretty naughty. Pretty naughty music. <laughs> oh, teehee. Cool. On that note, Sean, where can we find you? <laughs> you can find me on Once Upon a Cult coming back this month, uh, Marvelous Galaxy of Disney coming back this month, <laughs> or the other podcast coming back this month, Kevin. Yeah, that sounds like is. Sean needs to cast the multiplicity charm. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, you can find Sean and I on Solving for X as well, covering the X Men animated show. Yeah. Ooh, Dark, Dark Phoenix. Phoenix Saga. We're there. It's, it's here. It's here, baby. So amazing. <laughs> uh, you can find this podcast at Words of the Witches everywhere. Words of Witches if you're on Twitter. And uh, you can find my personal page, KGZ87, on Instagram. We'll see you next week for the real start of Arc 3. And, uh, yeah, (laughs) your destiny still awaits. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks for having me, guys.